Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, brothers and sisters. This video is very important. Many people are manipulated all the time. They believe that the people around them love them and that they care about them, but then they disappear in their time of need. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever had others exploit you for their interests? This video is for you. Know that you are not the only one who suffers from these situations. It is an experience that affects any good-hearted person. However, this video is not only for those who suffer from manipulation, it is also a warning to those who use it. Manipulation is immoral and forbidden. No man is allowed to deceive another man for his gain. To clarify the matter, we will discuss 12 Islamic lessons to avoid manipulation. Follow the video to the end. Do not listen to the whispers of Satan. Number one, seek knowledge. This is not just advice, but an obligation for every Muslim to strive to learn and reflect on creation. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam even said that seeking knowledge is a duty for every Muslim. The pursuit of knowledge inevitably makes us more astute and more intelligent. We gain a deeper understanding of the world and its complexities and become able to critically analyze the information we receive and evaluate it more accurately. Knowledge gives us the tools to discern between what is true and what is false, between what is right and what is wrong. Our Holy Quran and the Sunnah are a source of guidance and inspiration for Muslims all over the world. Are there perhaps other guides better than these? These offer complete and comprehensive guidance on all aspects of life, including spiritual, moral, social, economic, and legal. No book can reach the wisdom preserved in the Quran and the Sunnah. When we are well informed and aware, we are less susceptible to false information and outside influences that may try to manipulate us. Therefore, striving for knowledge is a key step in protecting the mind from external manipulation. Start using your book to reflect on the words of Allah. Allah tells us in chapter 38, verse 29, This is a blessed book which we have revealed to you, so that they may contemplate its verses, and people of reason may be mindful. Number two, control your emotions. Emotions cannot be suppressed, but they can be controlled. Muslims need to learn to manage emotions wisely and consciously without allowing them to dominate our decisions negatively. This means practicing patience, restraint, and reflection before acting. Proper control of emotions prevents us from protecting ourselves from external manipulation and allows us to maintain mental clarity in any situation. A practical example of how emotion control can protect us from manipulation is in a situation where someone is trying to provoke an emotional reaction in us to achieve a desired outcome. Imagine that you are involved in an argument and a person tries to provoke you to arouse anger and make you act impulsively. If you can control your emotions and remain calm, you will be able to rationally assess the situation and make decisions based on logic and will be able to get the better of that person. If, on the other hand, you lose control, you will end up being wrong, even though you may have been right. Our Prophet wasallam, said, the strong one is not the one who overcomes people with his strength, but the strong one is the one who controls himself when he is in anger. Sahih al-Bukhari, 6114. To stop being a slave to our emotions, Islam gives us clear and precise answers. Remembering Allah and his 99 names is a fundamental method in Islam to control our emotions. Each name of Allah represents an incredible attribute that reflects His mercy, compassion, strength, wisdom, and the best of virtues. This provides us with comfort and security.
reducing anxiety and stress that can result from daily challenges. We fully understand that everything is under Allah's control and that everything that happens must happen for a specific reason. Do not lose faith in Allah. He will surely reserve plans for you if you firmly believe in Him. Number three, develop honesty. Nowadays, there are two major problems among people, backbiting and lying. Honesty is now a virtue lost to time. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, When honesty is lost, wait for the hour. He was asked, How will honesty be lost, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said, When authority is given to those who do not deserve it, wait for the hour. Sahih al-Buhari 6496 Does this remind you of anything? Unfortunately, on YouTube, it is not possible to talk about it, but know that the end is getting closer. Write in the comments, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the fitna of the world. It is essential to cultivate honesty in all our actions and relationships so that we can live in harmony with ourselves and others. Our beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when his enemies accused him of the worst things, they could only say that he was a magician, because before the revelation he had always been the most honest person of all. His nickname was Es-Siddiq, the truthful one. Being honest in communications and relationships means providing accurate and complete information without hiding anything. This makes it harder for manipulators to distort the truth, just as the enemies of Prophet Muhammad could not disprove him. Being honest means keeping one's word and acting consistently with one's values and principles. Number four, detach from opinions. We are in an age where the opinions of others matter more than anything else in large part due to the spread of online communication platforms. Social media has made the sharing of opinions and ideas much more accessible, allowing anyone to express themselves publicly and reach a wide audience quickly and globally. This has created an environment in which the opinions of others are constantly present and influential, affecting our perceptions and decisions in ways that can be both positive and negative. Human beings are social creatures who tend to seek the approval of others. For us Muslims, however, the opinion of others matters little. Make no mistake, many of you confuse advice with opinion. People who end up saying things like, you cannot tell me I am wrong, only Allah can judge me. Many Muslims today use statements to escape advice. Astaghfirullah. People have embraced the idea of saying only Allah can judge me to get away with whatever they want. Yes, it is true, only Allah can judge you in the last resort. But if we are doing wrong, is it not better to listen to the advice of our brother or sister who wants to help us? So be careful to recognize advice from criticism and opinion. By detaching ourselves from the opinions of others, we become less susceptible to manipulation by those who seek to influence our actions through judgment. We maintain our ability to think independently and act on our values rather than following social consensus. Number five, adopt self-esteem. Do you know that voice in your head that often scolds you? questions your abilities, criticizes your actions, or feeds doubts about your self-worth? This voice is even more destructive than external criticism because it comes directly from within and can be constant if we don't know how to confront it. The inner voice demoralizes us by becoming dominant. In some cases, it can deeply influence the way we think and act. We may constantly question our decisions and actions, weakening our self-esteem and self-confidence. 
Do you know how they can manipulate you with this insecurity? Imagine you are in a relationship where you already have doubts about yourself and your worth. Your critical inner voice tells you that you are not interesting enough, attractive enough, or deserving of your partner's attention. Your partner may use this weakness to manipulate you. They may use emotional manipulation techniques to make you feel even more insecure about your abilities. They may constantly criticize you, undermine your self-esteem, and portray you as the problem in the relationship. May Allah grant you a good wife or husband, brothers and sisters. I wish you would not find yourself in these situations. To counter this inner voice, it is important to develop a compassionate and encouraging inner voice. This voice should support us, encourage us, and remind us of our Lord. It should counter negative and self-destructive thoughts with remembrance of Allah and help us regain confidence in our abilities. The Prophet وسلم, says, as narrated in Sahih Muslim, Book 50, Hadith 41, Allah is self-respecting and a believer is also self-respecting and the respect of Allah is violated if a believer does what he has forbidden him to do. Number six, do not overexpose. Secrets are a kind of trust and therefore a kind of contract or covenant that must be kept. It is necessary to be very careful about what we reveal about ourselves. If we share too much of ourselves, we become vulnerable to manipulation and control by others. Imagine sharing your innermost thoughts, deepest fears, and weaknesses with a person who later turns out to be untrustworthy. That person could exploit your vulnerabilities to manipulate you and use the information you shared against you. It is important to maintain some confidentiality about your life and thoughts. You need to choose carefully the people with whom you share secrets or personal information and make sure they are trustworthy and reliable. Very often we like to share private information about ourselves. In today's society, we have the internet at our fingertips with information flowing at an unlimited rate every second. However, what is shared, unlike words, remains forever. Even if you remove it, it may have been shared many times. Personal information can be used for fraudulent purposes, such as identity theft. And now, with artificial intelligence, it is even easier. To avoid the risks and problems of oversharing personal information online, it is important to be cautious. Islam urges us to be especially careful about revealing our sins. Allah the Almighty said in Sahih al-Bukhari 6069, All the sins of my followers will be forgiven except those who commit a sin openly or reveal their sins to people. An example of such a disclosure is when a person commits a sin at night and although Allah hides it from the public, he comes in the morning and says, Oh, so and so, yesterday I did such and such an evil deed. Number seven, avoid bad people. The Prophet wasallam, said, a man follows the religion of his friend. So everyone should consider whom he makes a friend. The people around us have a significant impact on our beliefs, behaviors, and attitudes and therefore it is essential to choose our friendships and relationships carefully. Avoiding negative, toxic, or immoral people is a key step in protecting oneself and preserving one's moral and spiritual integrity. Bad people can negatively influence our thinking, pushing us toward behaviors against Islam. In addition, Bad people may also try to manipulate us for their own selfish ends. They may try to exploit our weaknesses or vulnerabilities to get what they want without concern for our well-being or interests. We should be selective in our relationships and avoid people who have a negative impact on our lives. We should seek companionship in individuals who inspire, support, and encourage us to grow and improve as people. If you are interested in a group of people ready to help each other, we have opened the official channel Discord server 
be the first to join. It is important to seek companionship in people with the same moral values, with whom we can share common ideals and goals. Sharing similar values creates a deep and lasting bond based on trust, respect, and mutual understanding. The true friend is not the one with whom we meet just to laugh and have fun. The true value of friendship lies in appreciating a quality of the other person, and same for him. It must be a mutual admiration. Number eight, develop emotional intelligence. Today, we have crossed the line. Selfishness is at an all-time high and does not seem to be stopping anytime soon. Any kind of altruism has been lost in history. People seek only their good and play the victim when necessary. Every possibility of discussion is won by those who do the best for the victims. Astaghfirullah. Emotional intelligence, on the other hand, is the opposite of selfishness. It is the ability to create harmony between mind and heart, i.e. to use emotions intelligently. The ability to understand, use, and positively manage one's emotions to reduce stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflict. Did you know that our Prophet ﷺ was also a sensitive and emotional person? Listen to this little story. An old woman came and asked him to do du so that she would be in Jannah. Surprisingly, he replied, old people do not enter Jannah. The woman was disturbed by this short answer. He then continued his speech by saying, everyone will enter heaven as a young man. Upon hearing this, the old woman smiled and became excited. Emotional intelligence plays a key role in protecting us from manipulation because it enables us to understand, manage, and use our emotions effectively and positively. Imagine that we are involved in an emotional discussion or confrontation with someone who is trying to manipulate us by using our emotions. This person may be trying to exploit our sensitivity or fears to get what he or she wants. However, if we are aware of our emotions and have developed good emotional intelligence, we will be able to recognize the signs of manipulation. For example, we might notice that the person is trying to exploit our sensitivity for personal gain. Number nine, listen actively. It is easy for everyone to talk about their problems, struggles, and difficulties. But when it is time to listen to the other person, we stop being mentally connected to the talk and sometimes give the feeling that we are not interested in talking to the person. Imagine if our Prophet wasallam, at every question from his companions minded his own business without caring about his people. Would Islam be the same? I don't think so. Active listening is the key to building trusting relationships. Listening is hearing the words spoken, while the art of listening is understanding the meaning behind the words. Listening is a fundamental tool for building trust with others. If you make someone feel heard, they will begin to trust you. But it is not just about listening to words. It is about listening to everything around us. It is a gift, and we often forget the blessings contained in this act. We forget that not all people can listen. Therefore, listening to the sounds of nature strengthens our gratitude to our Creator. The Prophet ﷺ had a wonderful way of making people feel important just by the act of listening. He ﷺ, had attention and reverence when he listened to others and cared about everyone who interacted with him. His ego was never at the forefront of his conversations. The Prophet's ability to listen was based on finding ways to bring the message of Islam to humanity. Allah Almighty says in chapter 3, verse 159, It is by the mercy of Allah that you, O Prophet, were lenient to them. Had you been cruel or hard-hearted, they would certainly have deserted you. So forgive them, ask Allah's forgiveness for them, and consult with them in matters of conduct. When ye have made up your minds, put your trust in Allah, for Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. Number 10. Say no without fear. 
Learning to say no without fear is a crucial lesson in avoiding manipulation in relationships. Often, trying to justify a no to avoid hurting or making the other person feel bad can lead to false and misleading behavior. Islam values sincerity and telling the truth is a fundamental principle. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, taught us the importance of being honest and telling the truth even when it is difficult learning to say no respectfully and firmly, without fear of others' reactions, is a form of authenticity that protects against possible manipulation. Imagine a situation where a friend asks us to do something that goes against our principles or puts us in an uncomfortable position. In this case, having the courage to say no without fear protects us from manipulation. For example, a friend says to you, Hey, could you tell my family that I'm staying with you tonight? I have to cover up something I'm doing. We Muslims say, I cannot man. I cannot do what Allah has forbidden me. In this example, saying no without fear of offending our friend or suffering negative consequences allows us to maintain our moral integrity. Had we agreed to lie, we would have compromised our values and opened the door to possible future manipulation. Respectfully and firmly refusing is always better than reluctantly accepting or making up useless excuses. Number 11. Do not trust everybody. You are all educated men and women to choose what feels right and what feels wrong. The teaching of not trusting everyone is an important principle in Islam because it encourages us to exercise discernment and judgment in choosing the people in whom we place our trust, not everyone deserves our trust. This is not a matter of arrogance, but we Muslims have standards and we should follow them. Not trusting everyone blindly protects us from possible manipulation. For example, we may receive advice or information from people who may have ulterior motives or personal interests, Carefully examining people's intentions and behaviors before granting trust helps us avoid being deceived or taken advantage of. Trust is a valuable commodity that should be earned through consistent actions and ethical behavior. Not trusting everyone is one way to preserve our value. In times when the truth is increasingly hidden and falsehood is commonplace, it is always best to avoid trust. Continue to exercise critical and reflective judgment in every aspect of life. Number 12. Learn from the story of the Prophet ﷺ. In times of great hostility of the world towards us Muslims, what could come to sustain us but the best way of life practiced on earth? The Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, is not just a book of instructions and teachings, but a real guide for living this life. Let us imagine that we are in a difficult situation or a period of uncertainty. We can reflect on the life of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam and draw inspiration from his patience, wisdom, and courage in the face of adversity. His way of dealing with difficulties while maintaining compassion and justice teaches us to persevere with confidence and seek the good despite challenges. The story of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam is a valuable resource for understanding how to deal with life's trials. Studying his life offers us wisdom, advice, and practical lessons on how to navigate the complexities of the modern world. Learning from his story is a way to gain inspiration and guide our actions to live by ethical and moral principles. Comment, Alhamdulillah, if you reach this point in the video. Apply these teachings and manipulation will be the least of your problems. Never stop seeking Islamic knowledge, 
May Allah bless you. Ma'as-salamah.